Oh, hello there. You must be the new apprentice that Captain Woodgett was telling me about. Well, welcome aboard the Cutty Sark, built in 1869 and still going strong. My name is James Robson and I was born in 1853. Now, I know what you're thinking. Don't look half bad for my age, do I? <laughs> and I'm the ship's cook and the longest serving crew member on board here. I've sailed on it for over 10 years, a record only matched by Captain Woodgett himself. Now, listening to the way I talk and looking at my appearance, where was you thinking I was from? London, Hackney, Japan, China? Well, true story this is, right? Now, not a lot of people know this, but when I was a baby, I was found floating on a wooden raft in the middle of the South China Sea. But luckily, there was a ship passing by and the captain on it, he saw me from it and he picked me up from the water and his name was Captain Robson and he took me in and raised me as his own adopted son. And that's how I came to be, James Robson, raised in London, Poplar to be precise, and that's why I talk the way I do. And I've been sailing on ships ever since I was about knee high and working on them ever since I was about your age. But gosh, you look a bit young, mate. You see, you have to be at least 14 years old to become an apprentice, and your parents would have paid a good amount of bread, bread and honey, a bit of money for you to come on board here to learn how to be an able-bodied seaman. But I am gonna show you everything you need to know about being a cook on board here. So let's have a little butcher's, shall we? A little butcher's hook, a little look inside the galley, the kitchen where I work. Come along. Now the first thing you'll notice, it's not very big inside here, is it? This here is my hot coal oven and stove, just down here, is where we keep all the fresh flour. Now this over here is the uh, fresh meat cupboard. Now if you look carefully on the side here, you've got a bit of mesh lining. Now those are little air hole pockets. You see, we're going to be on these long sea voyages for about two and a half months, and we want to dry the meat to make the meat last even longer. Now, still think I've got some fresh bit of pork in there. Let's have a look see, shall we? <laughs> look at that, nice and fresh and ready to go. Fancy some of that, yeah? All right, oh, but don't touch. Go wash your hands first. Now there's something unique in here that you can't find anywhere else on the ship. That nice smell, well, that'd be my cooking, but no, it's not that. Have a look on the floor here, all right? Now, this is the only place on the entire ship which has tiling. And the reason for that, see this hot burning coal oven there? If one of them was to fall out the oven onto the floor, it would stop the ship from burning down. Clever, isn't it? <laughs> now, how many meals do you reckon get cooked in here? Well, there's 24 hours in a day, and we work every four hours, and we eat some grub in between them. So, let me test your maths, all right? How many falls in 24? Six. So I cook six meals per day for over 26 crew members every single day. Now, whew, that is a lot of cooking. And speaking of cooking, let me show you what we have on the old menu here, all right? Now, unfortunately, boys and girls, I can't actually read or write. You see, I didn't go to school. This ship was my classroom and this sea was my education, but I have memorized it, all right? So, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we have pea soup and pork. Captain Widget's favorite, that is. That's why we had it three times in a week. Tuesday, Thursday, we have salt, tram, horse, and bread. Salt, tram, horse, and bread. Do you reckon we're eating horses on board here? <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't worry, that's just another word we give salted beef. No eating horses here. Phew, all right. And Saturday we have junk and spuds. Now what's that? Junk and spuds. Fancy a bit of junk food? Piece of junk? <laughs> well, let me explain, all right. Now, the word we use for old rope is called junk. Now, when the meat is shredded and cut up, it looks like old rope. So that's why we call it junk and spuds. Spuds potatoes. Mmm. Fancy a bit of this beauty, yeah? <laughs> All right. And last but not least, what do we have on a Sunday? We have loo pie. But don't worry, it's not a pie from the loo. No, no, no. What it is, it's a nice soft dough pastry filled with some tender bits of meat with a nice crust on the edges and we top it off with a nice warm gravy. Mm-mm. Who fancy some of that loo pie, yeah? Fancy some of that? Yeah, well, I don't have none. But what I do have for you is a little treat. You can have this, the ship's biscuit. There you go, just for you there. But before you bite into it, what we have to do is knock out the weevils, all right? <laughs> you know what weevils are? 
little creepy coilies, little pesty little insects, little maggots which live inside flour. So before we bit into any ship's biscuit, what we do, we get our elbow like that and the biscuit, we start knocking it on the elbow and the weevils would start slowly falling out of the biscuit. But oh gosh, tell you what, that's a bit too hard. You know what I do? I soak it in some water, cook it in some grease and molasses and ooh, that is a nice dandy funk. And the key to a good dandy funk is a nice bit of spice. So each place we go around the world, I like to pick up some spices. And last we was in China, I picked some of this up. Now this is star anise. And if you add this to the dandy funk, it'll make it taste sweet, ooh, and smell even better, all right? Now speaking of treats, we better get a move on and uh, cook that pea soup and pork, don't we? So let me show you where we keep all the fresh produce on board here. Don't worry, you'll get used to that smell. You see? These are the loos, the heads as we call them. Now they're called that because they're located at the heads of the ship, the front. And the reason for that, if you think about it, the wind blows the ship forward that way, doesn't it? Which means the wind blows the smell that way. But I didn't come here to show you the loos, I came to show you these, the pig's dens. Mmm, fresh meat that is. Now let me tell you, as young apprentices, it was your job to clean them out every day. And I'll tell you what, Captain Woodgett, he loves animals and he gives the pigs a chance to stretch their little trotters and have a little run around up the upper deck every day. And I'll tell you what, I think the pigs have a little run around this morning. You know what that means? We have to swab the decks. What do we do with a drunken sailor? What do we do with a drunken sailor? What do we do with a drunken sailor? All I in the morning. Don't just stand there, come on. Hooray, up she rises, hooray, up she rises. This is one of the most important parts of this ship, especially for cooking your food. This is the fresh water pump. Now, please don't get mixed up, because at the front, we have a salt water pump. I've seen some apprentices try and drink and wash their face with that salt water. Ah, <laughs> Not good, all right? That water is used for cleaning the decks. Now, each person that comes on board the ship is entitled to eight pints of water per day. That's eight pints per person per day. Sounds good. However, five of them pints, they go to me. But don't worry, that's to cook your food. And the remaining three pints is for your drinking, brushing your teeth, and washing you and your clothes. And three pints, well, that looks something just like that, all right? So you have to be really clever with how you use your fresh water. And if you're clever like our crew, what they do, they use the remaining bits of water at the end of the day, put it all into one big bucket and wash their clothes together a little bit easier. But don't leave your dirty water buckets laying around here. Remember I told you about them pigs? Well, they like to stick their snouts in these dirty water buckets. <laughs> Knock the bucket over and that's another cleaning job for you apprentices, all right? So, got me water, got me pork, need some eggs. Let me show you where we get them. This is the chicken pen and where we get our eggs from our hens, Mavis and Maple. You see, Captain Woodgett, he loves animals. He looks after his pigs and then gives them a chance to run around, keeps Mavis and Maple nice and fed and even brings his dogs on board sometimes. And last we was in Angers, Captain Woodgett adopted two <laughs> monkeys. <laughs> and in fact, not just animals, he's a collector of all sorts of fancy things. Did he go downstairs to Twin Deck below here? Well, Captain Woodgett, he keeps his bicycle down there and top secret information this is, he likes to practice riding his bicycle up and down Twin Deck when we're docked and when it's empty. Only chance he gets. And in fact, the most fancy thing he picked up was something called, um, what was it? It was called a camera, that's it. And he takes these things called photographs. And I tell you what, I've got some photographs to share with you lot, which he uh, gave me. Yeah, have a little look at them. Remember I told you about Captain Woodgett's doggies? Well, those are his three little collies which he brings on board with him. Oh, <laughs> ain't they cute? And got another thing of beauty here. Have a little look at this one. Ship look familiar to you? Yeah, that is the Cutty Sark with its full mast and sails out at the sea, all right? Now, how do you reckon Captain Woodgett took that photograph there? We were bang in the middle of the sea. There was no land anywhere nearby. How could he have taken that photograph there? Well, he took that very little lifeboat behind you there. And he took me and an apprentice, we sailed round the cutty sart, Captain Woodgett got out his camera, whoosh, took this here. But the most impressive photograph he ever took was when we were sailing far down south from Australia, where it was freezing. And there were 
giant icebergs, all right? Higher than that top mast there. Well, that's well over 180 feet tall. And if you don't believe me, I've got a photograph to prove it to you. Yeah, have a little look at that giant iceberg there. And I'll tell you, the noise it made when these things used to melt, ooh, that was scary, I'll tell you. <gasps> Crikey, what's the time? We better get a move on that pea soup and pork. Right, chop chop, come along. <sighs> Shouldn't be too much longer. Just gotta wait for the old pea soup to cool down. And whilst we wait, I stuck the old kettle on. Fancy a cup of tea? They don't call this sailing ship a tea clipper for nothing, you know. You see, it's called a tea clipper because the main cargo we carried on here was tea. And it's called a clipper because it clips over the ocean waves, unlike other ships which plough through the water. And another word to go fast means to go at a clip. And the Cutty Sark was the fastest sailing ship in the world. You see, we used to race from Britain to China and uh, we used to bring that finest and freshest crop of tea back home to Britain. And do you know where the word tea comes from? It comes from the Chinese word tei. And there's a Cantonese word for tea called cha. You see, when we was over there, we had to ask the locals for tea. And we brought those words back home with us because it had a nice ring to it. Mum ever asked you if you fancy a cup of cha? Yeah? <laughs> Though unfortunately, we uh, don't trade tea no more. You see, steamships started getting involved in these little races to China. And uh, they took sneaky little shortcuts where our sailing ships couldn't go to. Well, because there was barely any windows routes. And by the time we got to China, there was no good tea cargo left. So that's why we started going to Australia to buy wool. Now, let me tell you, I still wish we was trading tea because wool <coughs> does not smell good, I tell you. It stinks. And this wool was packed in giant bales just down that hatch over there. And if you was on tween deck below here, <laughs> you'd have to smell that every day. Right, that pea soup should be nice and cool now. Now, normally the uh, steward would do this, but uh, I'll give you the honours today, all right? You can take the captain his food. So, chop, chop, off you go before it gets cold. But please don't drop it. Don't get no seawater in it. Otherwise, the captain ain't going to be happy, all right? Go on, off you go. Chop, chop. <laughs> 